All right, guys, we're going to start into uh, what I would consider sort of the real start of our journey through environmental science this year, where we're actually going to get into the nuts and bolts um, of ecosystems. That's the start of Unit 3. And so to start that off, we're going to talk a little bit about some underlying terms that we need to know as we dive into the idea of ecosystems. So essentially, most of this video is about the fact that we have four components that make up um, the Earth and then the ecosystems and all of the life support systems um, that are underneath that. And so we've got the atmosphere, hydrosphere, lithosphere, biosphere. You can sort of tell from the terms basically what they mean, but we're going to go through each individually and talk about what specifically it would mean and a few things about each one of those. So the first of these is the atmosphere. Now if you look here, we've got sort of a diagram of the five layers of the atmosphere. Really there are two of them that matter for us. The first of those is the troposphere. Okay, so the troposphere is the lowest level. Essentially, it's about 17 kilometers up or so at the poles, uh, or I'm sorry, at the equator, and about 7 kilometers or so up at the poles. And you may be thinking to yourself, well, wait a minute, why wouldn't it be the same amount all the way up? Well, remember that we've got gravitational pull, and we've got the Earth spinning, and the Earth isn't actually an exact sphere. And so all of that is going to act to distort um, just slightly uh, the shape of the atmosphere. So it's going to be a little bit different at the poles, usually a little bit thinner then it's going to be at the equator. Um, the troposphere, this lowest level, is also where most of the weather on the Earth occurs. So when we talk a lot about climate, um, a lot of what we're going to be talking about is mostly going to be about the troposphere. Not everything, um, but a lot. This is uh, The troposphere is also where um, the greenhouse effect is going to take place, and we'll talk about that in just a second. The other area that we're going to be concerned with is the second layer, okay, and that would be the stratosphere. Um, and what's real important about the stratosphere for us is that this is where the ozone layer is. Now, the stratosphere goes up a lot higher, um, up in some places to about 50 kilometers or so. Um, and But what matters most to us and what is most environmentally important for us is that this is where the ozone layer is. Ozone is O3, um, and O3 has a particular characteristic that it is able to absorb uh, most of the ultraviolet rays that are coming in from the sun without this um, we would get uh, something like 20 times more ultraviolet rays hitting us every day. You pretty much wouldn't be able to walk outside without massive amounts of sunblock on and probably full clothing covering your entire body. Um, so about 95% of that gets filtered out by the stratosphere. So that obviously is pretty important for us environmentally as well. Um, so greenhouse effect. Um, the greenhouse effect, we always tend to think of this as like being a bad thing because we talk about greenhouse gases and and climate change and how uh, global warming is happening and all of those things. But the fact of the matter is we need a certain amount of the greenhouse effect. If there was no greenhouse effect, there wouldn't be any life on the planet. We have to have the greenhouse effect to be able to keep the planet warm enough to support life. So you, you need to know what the basic idea of the greenhouse effect is. So essentially it's that the sun emits radiation, right? Okay, solar radiation, it's going to come in. Most of it's going to go through the atmosphere. Um, about half of what hit, goes through the atmosphere gets absorbed by the Earth's surface. Okay, then some of that is reflected back up, okay, into the Earth's atmosphere, and then some of that is then going to get reflected as it hits the different layers of the atmosphere. Okay, some of it goes back out into space, but then again, a lot of it gets stopped and gets reflected back. And so, if you go back to this atmospheric thing. At each of these layers, there's kind of a boundary here um, that enables a lot of these things like the greenhouse effect to happen. So some of that radiation is going to come back in. Again, we need that. Life on Earth wouldn't be able to exist if there wasn't some of it. Now, of course, the controversy now is that are we getting too much of it? Um, and that, obviously, we're heating up the Earth. Um, most scientists would agree that the Earth's overall global temperature is rising. And so the questions then that we're going to talk about throughout this year is, how much is it rising? How much of that is due to man-made effects? And can we really do anything to influence that? Because climate is a pretty tricky thing to deal with. So our second component is the hydrosphere. Um, that essentially is going to include all of the water on or near Earth's surface. So water vapor in the air, okay? Um, liquid water, now that would obviously be in the oceans, lakes, things like that. Um, ice, polar ice caps. Um, and I forgot to say with liquid water here, we're also talking about um, liquid water that's underneath the ground, okay, in aquifers. Um, so ice, polar ice caps, all of that stuff, ice in glaciers and on mountaintops. And then uh, permafrost, there's an immense amount of water that's actually trapped in the frozen areas of the earth in the ground itself, not on the ice on the top layer, but in the soil 
there's a lot of water that's frozen there as well. So all of that makes up the hydrosphere. Um, the third component of forest is the geosphere. Sometimes you'll see this called a lithosphere. Litho is a, um, a term that means stone. Okay, so we're talking about, so does geo in a sense. And so we're talking about the solid areas of the earth, so the minerals and stuff like that. Um, we're going to briefly uh, later on in the year talk about um, plate tectonics and some earth science stuff just to make sure that you have a pretty good grasp on what's going on there. Um, but you get three main layers in the earth. You've got the crust up top. That's where we live. Um, that's where the oceans are and all the land masses are. And then you've got the upper and lower mantle, the inner and outer mantle underneath that. And then, of course, we've got a core here, the inner core being mostly um, liquid. And this is all of this is what's going to cause all the magnetic stuff that's going on in the earth. You've got um, iron and nickel in the core there, and that's rotating around. That's what it's going to cause all the magnetic, um, the magnetosphere in the earth. Um, so that's the third component, the geosphere. Um, and then the fourth component is the biosphere. So any place where we find life, um, this is where what we're going to term the biosphere. So this can be um, things that are in the ocean, on the land. Uh, obviously, there are living organisms in the air. There are living organisms under the earth uh, to some degree in some places. Um, so a couple of terms that go along with that. Um, one of them is biotic. So we refer to all of the biotic stuff as things that are alive. So as far as our four components, that would be the biosphere. And then that would mean that the abiotic components, okay, when you see the prefix a in front of something, it means not, okay? Um, so biotic means living, abiotic means not living. So the atmosphere, the hydrosphere, the geosphere. Now it's important to realize that, that these, there's some overlap here because obviously the biosphere encompasses these three things um, as well. They all three go into making up um, the biosphere as well. So if you took out the biosphere, what's left are the abiotic components, or all the minerals and elements and nutrients and all of those things um, that we're going to talk a lot um, about in the next couple of chapters. So that all leads us to there are two basic things um, that we have to have to maintain life on the planet. So the two overarching principles that we're going to talk a lot about as we go throughout the rest of this unit on ecosystems. Um, the first is that we have to have energy from the sun. Um, almost all of the energy that we have in any sort of ecosystems on the earth comes from the sun. It's a one-way transfer. The sun emits radiation to us. The earth does emit a little bit of radiation back out into space, but it's not really a lot. And so it's a one-way transfer, energy from the sun. That's where we get the vast bulk of our energy. Now, there are a few life forms um, that don't need that. There are some chemotrophic life forms. Um, one could argue that the situation on the earth wouldn't even be in the condition um, to generate those chemicals for those chemotrophic life forms. So essentially, we got we have to have energy from the sun. Um, and then the second linchpin um, is that we have to have cycling of nutrients. We're going to talk a lot um, in the next few videos about the cycling of nutrients, and you guys are going to do a lot of work on this cycling because there are a lot of different cycles um, that are vastly important to us. You remember the water cycle from elementary school, maybe the carbon cycle, and we're going to talk about that, and the nitrogen cycle, and phosphorus, and sulfur. Um, a whole lot of different things that we're going to talk about how they cycle um, throughout. And we need that because essentially on the earth we have a finite amount of nutrients and resources. Um, and so if we use up all the nitrogen, that nitrogen has to come back in for the plants to be able to use it. Okay, The carbon that goes up in the atmosphere gets pulled back down in the photosynthetic processes and then herbivores are going to eat that. And so all of, that, the, all of those resources get cycled through in one way or another. All right, so that's a brief introduction. After this, we're going to jump into what ecosystems are in our next video. Um, and then we're going to talk about um, energy transfer, and we're going to talk about uh, all of the cycling.